have no idea if this is going to work again, but hopefully it does. Um, it's just that kind of day. It's one of those days where already I feel as though it's the afternoon uh, and it's and it's not. So that's interesting. Um, happy Wednesday. Uh, if you were just with us, I'm trying to get Petter to join in. Um, some of you guys are popping back in. Thank you so much for doing so. Um, thank you for being the first one in there. That's awesome. I showcase official. Okay, Randy is joined. Mike's joined. Ellen Nelson's in there. Um, I am well. Thank you. I'm still on my coffee. Like, whoa. Let's see if. Um, thank you for welcoming back. Let's see if we can't get Petter in this time around. Still no Petter. Um, I have a feeling he's gonna. He's going to do this. It's gonna happen. Um, at this point, am I? Might, I can tell you guys a story. I can tell you guys a joke. So what do you call a, I can't believe I'm telling this joke. What do you call a chicken that's good at math? Anybody? Well, a math of a chicken. <laughs> okay, anyways, all right. Um, on that note, I'm gonna on live now. We'll see if he is joining. Anybody like that joke? What else I got? Um, I feel like my, my nephew should be on here with me so he can tell you guys a joke as well. Um, <laughs> um, I hope, hi from Mississippi, all right. Yeah, so Mike, you like that joke? What else do I got? <laughs> Chicken George, I miss Chicken George. I think he is, um, I'm sure they're all, ah, Petter's joined, all right. Um, Chicken George is a guy in real life in case anybody uh, hasn't had Talk to me. Hi. Hello. It's so nice to see you. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm so glad you just got on because I just told a terrible joke. Like I just told <laughs> a terrible joke and I was about to do much more and so I'm really thankful that you're here. Um, yeah. But but you, are, you, are, you have a good humor, yeah? <laughs> and when, I think it's good humor. There's other people in my life who may not think that it's the best. <laughs> Whatever. That's good. How are you? That's good. I'm back home on the farm, and you see we have a beautiful uh, wow. uh, view today. Nice weather. So we have been out quad biking and uh, making a new beach in the front of the house. What do you mean a new beach in the front of your house? Because we, we're driving on the ice the whole winter on the, down there uh -huh. and on the other side. And then we have also made, what can I say? I don't know where. We have made the track. Uh -huh. Yeah, we made a track down there, quad bike and car track for 1K uh, just uh, in front of the house. So wow. that's what I've been doing these days. <laughs> Nothing like that. Uh, it's like you can't get out of the grinning, right? Like you, of course, are going to do anything that you can. How much land do you guys have? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's a lot of forest and, you know, I'm living in a place where is nobody lives and we have a rally track. I have a... We have a rally track and we have a hotel over there. What? Is that your hotel? Yeah. Wow. And then uh, we have a rally stage. What? That, yeah, five, five case rally stage. <laughs> yeah, because you have to practice. You have to practice. That's okay. insane. Yeah. So, uh, you know, after I lived uh, 10 years in Monaco, it was uh -huh. absolutely fantastic to come here and uh, live very quietly and, uh, and have a lot of fun. Where are you exactly in Norway? Not in Norway, it's in Sweden. The Norwegian right. border. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> it's terrible, I know. <laughs> it's terrible. Yes. You know what, this is part of why my timing from everything was so confused. Because in my mind, okay, yeah, that is terrible. I thought you Sweden, were... Sweden, Norway have the same time, uh, so it's okay. <laughs> but uh, my wife is Swedish. My yeah. wife is Swedish, and then uh, after I lived in Monaco 10 years, I couldn't move straight back to Norway. Okay. So the Norwegian border is 800 meters that direction. Oh, is it really? Okay. All right, so yeah. it's like kind of close. It's, you're like, meh, not it's quite. <laughs> it's quite close, quite close. So, uh, how about we enjoy, we enjoy. Okay. Well, people have just popped in from, from Mexico and from Italy and a couple of other places. So thanks to everyone who is uh, joining us. People are curious, is that your house? That is your, that is your house. Is that your hotel as well? No, this is uh, my house. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sitting on the quad bike outside, you know, so I, uh, <laughs> I will go, I will go in, inside soon, but I need some air. 
Yeah. yeah, no, I don't blame you. So it's officially seven o'clock where you are. Yes. Okay, so here's, so for those who are joining us, apparently time zones are not my thing at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I have Googled so many times as to what time it is where you are to where I am, and it's still not right. Google is still telling me we're not supposed to be talking right now. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I have stopped watching the time, you know, and then you sent me a message before and then you said, oh, are, we, are you ready? And I was uh, naked and on the way into the shower, you know, to, to actually get ready for your, uh, for your interview, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm really glad that we've been pushed back. You, your shower paid off. It was good. Uh, I'm um, still, I even put on perfume now and, uh, okay, I haven't shaved, but. Uh, <laughs> I put on some makeup for you too. I didn't put on the perfume. I, I decided that one I'll wait, but. <laughs> yeah, but you never know. You never know with the never technology, know. you know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Um, okay, so a couple people just throughout. Of course, I want to catch up with you and just hear how life is. I mean, you've been exceptionally busy, but people are asking already questions about, you know, what about some Team Solberg happening in the UK? What's going on, you know, future of your guys' existence? I mean, you guys have been rocking and rolling. It's been so cool. Well, it's, well, I did my first um first race in 92 i think and uh, and my parents did autocross for 10 years before that so i've been every single year every weekend uh, since 82 uh, we have been on the road and uh, and then after oliver started you know it's like starting again you know it's it's uh, it's non-stop and uh, okay i retired last year sort with, of uh... sort of retired <laughs> well after this gaming uh, thing started <laughs> uh, with the e-gaming, the life turns around again, and I'm, I, I actually having really fun with it, you know. So, uh, yeah, I have actually, you know. Then I don't have to do so much home uh, work inside the house, you know, because yeah, I have exactly. excuse that I have to focus on exactly. actually this gaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Pernilla really appreciates that for sure. There's always an excuse for something there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. But we have travel. You know, I've been traveling the whole uh, the whole life, and approximately maybe two hundred fifty to two hundred eighty days a year, and yeah. uh, rallying, rallycross, uh, a uh, lot of chances to do Le Mans, um, uh, LMP One with yeah. Oreca, but I said no to that because I I still needed some action and sideways and uh, yeah, and there's something about it, right? It is something about it, and. Yeah, I need to move my ass sometimes and I have to sit inside the car to really feel it, you know. <laughs> totally. I think that first and foremost, I want to talk about the, uh, we'll go back to the esports and the e-racing stuff, but did you see Oriole's comment that you're basically kicking their butts and, and schooling them? <laughs> no, I saw the message, but I can't say that I'm kicking their ass. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, honestly, this, this R Factor game that we're doing, it's actually fantastic. You know, it's so many drivers from different type of categories mm -hmm. that um, I'm go I went inside now. I, okay, yeah. There you I'm sitting on. Wait, oh, I can't wait to dive into to what you have behind you. I bet you have some gems behind you. Um, I, wow, yeah. Um, no, but the thing is, you know, the comments and the, the WhatsApp group we have is a lot of bullshit inside, to be honest with you. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of things that, you know, that you can't even talk about. <laughs> I know. And, uh, I understand. And, and then Vettel uh, joined this weekend also for the mm -hmm. for the last weekend. So I think this is great fun for many of us who have been uh, retiring from uh, from being professional to yeah. having fun. But it seems like it's getting a little bit serious there also, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's what I find so fascinating. Have you have you gotten dressed up in in your any of your suits? Have you gotten your racing gloves on when you get when you get in a sim? Like, do you get like super into it? Like, where are you at right now with your with your competition well, level? To be honest with you, before this weekend, I it was quite stressful because I also did the official uh, Formula One race on. Right. Um, so our factor with all the all drivers on Saturday, and then the Formula One all race on Sunday. Drivers. The secret is safe that you just called all of them old drivers, by the way. No, I, did I say all of them? Yeah? I don't some know. Of, okay, I mean some of the older drivers, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was quite hectic. I needed to practice for, you know, I forgot the R-Factor a little bit because I drove for the official team Renault mm -hmm. on Sunday. And 
I felt it was got a little bit too serious, so I said no to the next race, and I will only focus on the R factor thing this uh, coming Saturday. So you really did want to kind of take the time away from the from the challenge, not the challenge, but from the tension and the intensity, really. Yeah, because it got a little bit too serious, to be honest with you. There's a lot of young, uh, young uh, drivers in, <laughs> young drivers in that. Uh, in that uh, in that competition and uh, and specialists, uh, mm -hmm. so, um, but maybe I will do one later. But for now, I, I have enough with one of them. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think this will change the way that people get into? And I, I call it like you know outside racing at this point because how do you you know distinguish between the two? Do you think that that some of the people who are not outside race car drivers who are more the sim, the esports, the iRacing side of things. Could this pave the way for them to get into outside racing? I think some of them is giving, uh, for sure, attention, you know, of uh, their qualities. Uh, I'm planning to build my own e-racing team after the Silver World Cup that uh, we're having. Uh, are. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but... Uh, it will, not, I, it will never take over from the real world because, you know, this feeling, you know, when you do rallying, rally cross or drifting or, or uh, real Formula One, you know, or NASCAR or whatever, it will never get this, you know, special feeling, you know, it's... Uh... You still feel competition, but it's not the adrenaline behind the wheel when you put your helmet on and you're in the zone, like you are, you know, in the zone. It's definitely much cheaper to crash in e-gaming and uh, compare it <laughs> in the real life. But, uh, <laughs> uh, There's that. That's a, that's a pro. Yeah. But you can also learn something from it, to be honest with you. I, uh, I must say I enjoy, I, I enjoy it, you know. Do you sweat? Like, do you like get like, nervous and anxious before the, the e-sports or e-racing stuff? Not at all. No? No? Do you take your shoes off? Do you get comfortable? Like, what's your... What's your like, no, no, I I drive with shoe, uh, driving shoes and uh, and gloves, yeah, okay. uh, yeah. All Maybe right. next time we sit with a helmet and a full package, you know. But no. <laughs> Simon, but, uh, Simon, I heard I had Simon Pagano on here a couple of weeks ago, and he got in his driving his, like full on driving suit uh, to go racing in the iRacing for the IndyCar stuff. Seriously. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was like his, like, he's like, I just got to get in the zone. Like, that's what it means to me. I just got to. <laughs> and so we went full throttle with, <laughs> with all of his gear. It was awesome. Oh, well, I don't want to sit in my overall in my own house. You know, I've been had that since my whole, uh, in my whole life already. I think it's enough. So I'm yeah. sitting in the training, training uh, pants or what yeah. do you call it? Yeah. yeah joggers uh, or sweats. Uh, yeah. And then, uh. And then I have Oliver in the background to help me, you know, like a spotter. Yeah. Uh, and he's talking all the time, you know. Oh. So how, I <laughs> how good is he? Like, I know that people from a, not a dad perspective, but from an angle of true talent, both on, you know, in car and so in the, in, and also in e-racing or in, in i-racing or whatnot. How good of a, of a driver? How smart is Oliver, really? Yeah, the thing is, you know, you have a, uh, when you have kids, you're always proud of them. It's yeah. uh, you always want the best. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm uh, I'm a little bit old-fashioned guy, so I'm a little bit realistic. So I'm I'm uh, I'm saying that mm -hmm. you have the speed. You he, um, he have done much less um, mistakes than what I did when I started. Really? Is that because he's learned them from you, or do you think he's just he's ahead of the game and in, in from a knowledge standpoint? Well, he had been to, uh, because he was born three months too early, so he was 870 gram. And then he went to uh, Australia with me for the rally before he was one year old. Oh, really? And so when you have been on all these races in rallying or, or rally cross, mm -hmm. you see people do mistakes. And then, you know, and you see the good things also what people are doing. So I yeah. think kids take things quicker than, than anybody. Yeah. So obviously now it's just you have to build on the experience and uh, and take it from there and not not rush too quickly to to win. You have to build up the experience before you can uh, can really get uh, everything together. You know. 
Well, not this, only not only from that angle of like the win and obviously having everything come together in the moment to win, but it's also appreciating that win in a completely different way once you've had those downfalls and those negatives and those in those really low times too. To drive in the World Championship is completely different. So he won the race in European Championship. Uh, he won, you know, Norwegian Championship, Swedish, uh, Latvian, Estonian. Mm -hmm. But World Championship is different, and uh, and that mentality you have to turn around uh, sometimes. And you have to remember the youngest world champion in rallying is is twenty seven. Yeah, I was twenty. I was almost uh, just twenty eight. Colin McRae was twenty seven. Yeah, and. Uh, so it wow, just tells I, you what's so un incredible about that, right? Because in, in a lot of forms of racing, that's getting up there in an age. Not, I mean, it, we all know it's not, but like that idea that when you're in your late twenties, early thirties, you are on the tail end of it. Right. I mean, there's people have proven that wrong, but how early it starts for so many that shows a, how dynamic rally racing really is. How yeah. Far if, if you do circuits, <laughs> It's a little bit different because it's uh, you can learn the tracks and you, it, it, it's it's on a it's on a very a kilometer road or three kilometer. But you do four hundred k's in the different type of roads in rallying, and you know it's everything can take you out so quickly. Right. Um, in rallycross, you can do it. Uh, I'm I'm sure you can do it when you're seventeen to win or sixteen. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe in rallying that will also change in the future. So. Um, but he have done rallycross and rally now, so yes. we have got the experience a little bit of both and building up, um, building up experience. So, yeah. What have you learned from him? Because I think obviously the takeaways. I mean, how old is Oliver? He's now. How old is that? What's his age? Uh, eighteen. He's eighteen. So he's obviously learned so much from you, and I'm sure you have. Like, what, I don't know what you guys talk about at dinner table besides <laughs> I don't know motorsport. But what what have you learned from him at this point? Well, we are definitely not talking about curtains and uh, and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> but curtains are a very important topic. Sometimes. Make sure you yeah, block okay. out ones. And <laughs> well, I'm very bad at this normal life, like many people have. Maybe I, I'm. I still uh, passionate about details, technical side, uh, and with Oliver, it's the same thing. You know, we enjoy talking about. Uh, a lot of things is about perfectionism at the end of the day right. to get all the small details together. Mm -hmm. The big things will be easier to do. Uh, but that's an interesting, I, I hadn't thought about the details are the tough part. The big things are the easier. That's my opinion anyway, when you run a team like we have done, it's, uh, it's so much easier to get everybody on the same wavelength. If you, mm -hmm. if you always talk about the details, the perfectionism, if everybody's working in the same direction, uh, it will be much easier to reach your goal. But you need to have all the other people with you about this, you know. Mm -hmm. So when they have a team meeting, we always have also the the chef with us, you know. Yeah, That's some have best uh, parts of them of being out of the <laughs> chef. I and love food. The coffee, the coffee from Sweden, the Swedish coffee, the Norway Norwegian's coffee. It's you can't beat it. I have 17 coffee machines, so everywhere I'm, I have it in the garage here, I have it over there, I have it in my, yeah, so everywhere. You, you understood when I said this morning I needed more coffee, you get it, <laughs> you understand. Yeah, definitely with your timing, I understand you need some coffee because you are absolutely so far away from <laughs> so far time away. zones. So early. Um, yeah, but, okay, so you have how many coffee makers, 14? No, I have 17, I counted them and in, I have it in each truck, each uh, <laughs> each garage, in my gym, and I, yeah, everywhere. The, that's, that was one of my favorite moments with being with World Rallycross, is I always could count on some somebody having good coffee. It didn't matter what I had a very good coffee. <laughs> I had a very good coffee. <laughs> I remember OMSE had some, had some really strong Swedish coffee in their, in their pit, in their haulers, and everything else. It was <laughs> But going back to it, that's part of the team. When, that, when the team is focusing on details, not necessarily on the coffee, but when they're focusing on the details of the car and, and being led by a real leader, um, that is obviously what, you know, it takes to kind of win championships at that point. 
Well, it depends. Maybe many people have different goals when they do things, you know. But uh, for me, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna put in effort and okay. you have sponsors with you and everything, it's all about winning. That's it. It's very simple. If mm -hmm. I will never go into anything at all mm -hmm. if it's not the plan of winning. So if I have a, uh, somebody that ah, oh, let's build on this, you know, we will use use a little bit of time to do it. No chance, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. no point. I, I get I get really pissed off, you know, and and the thing is, you know, another thing that pisses me <laughs> off is if somebody <laughs> says no, that's the one thing. Uh, no. This is no, I don't like ah. difficult. Difficult, I don't like, hmm. and um, and I don't like um, problem. All these words are uh -huh. just telling the people to understand this that if you're coming with me with a problem. I don't like. If you're going to come to me, you have to come with a, with a solution. solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. Then we can discuss. Mm. And uh, this is small details, you know, but it makes a good atmosphere all around because then people have to think themselves to go forward quicker, to right. not waste any time. And you put pressure on themselves mm -hmm. to actually perform. And I talk about mechanics and PR people or whatever, you All know, them, the whole team. make it happen. And that's it. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting as a leader, I, I've been really trying to study the word leader and leadership as, as, a, as a word. And I think, you know, you're kind of describing what a, a leader is who identifies the main goal, right? Whatever that is in this case, winning and the idea of potentializing your team, PR cooks, whatever, whoever's right. You're potentializing them to say like, look, like you're, you're capable of coming up with a solution before you come and address the problem. Right. And so there's that, that idea of how are we going to get to this main goal? It's, it's, it's going to be solution oriented with these details. And that like kind of like represents leadership in a sense. Yeah. And also friendship, you know, and you mm -hmm. have to take away, take care of every single person. Mm -hmm. And you have to also think about their families at the same time. Right. Because if they have a good, you know, they work very, very hard, most of them. Mm -hmm. If they have a, if you include their wife or lover or whatever, sometimes. Yeah. It will be much easier for them to uh, get accept, acceptation mm -hmm. to do a, a proper job. Right. So they're coming to the work with a smile and you sit in the morning with a coffee with the, that they're happy. <laughs> yeah. And the eyes is, you know, when their eyes are smiling, you know. This is what you need out of people. So that's why many leaders say that uh, keep distance from your people and, and uh, let them work. But I'm opposite. I yeah. need everybody to be happy, everybody close, friendship, hugging and, you know, appreciation for the results you are trying to do. Because mm -hmm. I want a passion and life and heart yeah. into yeah everything they do if you're going to be a part of it and when you win them you know it's it's uh, very emotional and and th they feel like they have mm -hmm. they're invested they're they are part of the team Solberg as as it would be as it really represents to a completely different level very very important and uh, that's why the coffee is important the food is important <laughs> always, always. because the food is it's so important that it's, it's, uh, it's proper that you eat breakfast together with the whole team, you eat lunch together with the team, and have dinner together. Yeah. Even yeah. if you are 100 people, you need to try to get everybody. Uh, yeah. So it's no grouping or whatever, you know? Right. Which is obviously a challenge right now with all the social distancing. Real quick, <laughs> real quick though, as it relates to where you learned that, did is that something that through your career you've just established, you know, whether it be a leadership perspective or is it something that only recently have you really established that this is your goal, this is how you're going to lead your team? Or did it take a while to learn that? Well, the thing Subaru, is, don't Subaru, think... By the way, Subaru is saying you need ice cream as well. And I 110% agree with you guys on, <laughs> on the ice cream side. But, but <laughs> did, it, did, did this take a while for you to learn? The thing is, you have to think about where you started in your career. Mm -hmm. When did you get your people to help you? Because you didn't have any money and you need help from everybody, from family, friends. Yeah. So it's just a very simple philosophy of uh, getting people together and enjoy, enjoy it, you know? If I was yeah. not there every day, every morning or every night, or if yeah. they worked at four o'clock in the morning, they will not have the same appreciation. So it's, it's so much up to 
us that we are there all the time for them, you know. Yeah. But because then see that we are we are putting in so much effort, mm -hmm. they will put in the same amount of effort, you know. Sure. From that leadership perspective too, saying that like I, I have enough humility in myself to be able to do the different tasks along the way in order to be able to... Yeah, but you're a woman. You are good at everything. You can do many things at the same time. I'm a man, you know. I, I need three people around me to yeah. do your job, you know. <laughs> that is something we can do. And we can multitask like the best of men. <laughs> That's why you need more women at the team. It's so important. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we will completely... Us women on the motorsports side will 110% back you when you kind of pull out an advocate for us. So. Hey, by the way, you have mentioned 110 percent two times now, eh? Yes, it, because I believe yeah. uh, if you're going to do it 100, you might as well do 110. I don't know. You know what my company called? No. I made the company when I was 18 years old, and it's called PS 110 percent. No. Seriously. I knew that we had a connection. I knew it. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's it, that's my company was, name. Yeah. What was your inspiration for that? Because everybody say that 100 is maximum, but I think it's always can be pushed to the limit and, and I'm pushing yes. limit with everything. So 110%, it is possible. It is possible. Yeah. Yes. Wait, oh, that makes me so happy. There's some <laughs> joy within that. I had no idea, but I'm really glad that, that's, that we're on the same page. That's yeah. Amazing. Now I will show you a little bit of the second floor. Uh, oh, it's overall, Oliver, uh, Oliver's overalls since uh, <laughs> in this room. Did you just call them overalls? Overalls, yeah. Is that what, what do you, you call, call them? Bracelets? bracelets, yeah. Overalls, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew that. Okay. So this is Oliver, Oliver's private room. Oh, this oh. is from Razor Champions in Miami. Yeah, taking it. What year was uh, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will show the wall. No, no, yeah. No, no. Like, I'm Oliver, over the wall. Oliver, I can't <laughs> believe like you're like a real. No, don't show my head. Like you're so old. Like, I You're so old, she's not I, old. Yeah. Are like he, real. He is he's getting older. He has been working the whole day on this uh, racetrack outside. So uh, his cousin come today. So <laughs> they're gonna play. They're gonna play with the cold bikes and cars tomorrow on the on the track. Oh, right. How cha how tough was that to build it out? Has it been a challenge? Yeah. Well, first of all, I I was out with my digger, and mm -hmm. I uh, I did that for three days, and then I rolled it. So I, uh, <laughs> it's true. I have a big blue, uh, was it a big blue uh, thing on my ass? You know. Really? Yeah, I I'm was sore. It. So then I got my friend to get another digger, and he finished today with it. So that's really funny. Yeah. Oh. It's my uh, my overall. Your overall. I had no idea that's what they were called. Where's that one from? Is that the? That's from Spain. Last two years ago, when I came okay. third. And this is my last overall from last year when I did Goodwood wow. and the Rally GB. Oh, that's a sweet overall, or whatever y'all call it. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have every single overall and helmet from every race I, had, I drove since I was 18 years old. Every single one, oh, every trophy. What so that's, on earth? That's amazing. Every single one. Which, okay, uh, so then, so that leads me then, what would be out of your helmet? your trophy and your race suit. If you could take one of each, what one would you take? Well, it must be, uh, it must be in 94 when I won the championship in Rallycross with the Volvo 240. Okay. With 340 horsepower. And it must be the Rally GB first victory in 2002. Okay. And then the Rallycross World Championship in 2014. 14 meant more than 15? Did I win it 14 or 15 or 14 and 15? I 14 don't remember. <laughs> okay, 14 and. <laughs> that's, when you know you, that's when you know yeah. you've made it, when you, when you forget which championships you've actually. <laughs> yeah. Here. And then I have almost every car I've been driven also in my career. I'm what? missing, I am missing uh, uh, Escort and a Ford. Or, or not, I have taken care of most, most cars I've been driving. The Subaru I won my uh, first rally with. Yep. And uh, where do you have those housed? Where are they living? What carriage? What garage? Well, now you're back home, but I have a museum in uh, close to my workshop where okay. uh, I have everything. So maybe next time I will show you my museum, workshop, and cars and 
and yeah. uh, and all the we'll, stuff. But we'll do part two when you're in your workshop. Yeah, why not? <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do it. We'll do a drink with part two. Um, okay, so I know that there's been asked a couple of times. What was your favorite? I think rally moment um, and rally cross moment. You kind of talk oh. a little bit about what that's all about because uh, it's gaming room here. <laughs> Oh, wait, hang on. We'll get back to that question. Yeah. Can I uh, the room? No, I can take that question first. The, the moment... Uh... The exact question was, let me see if I can't pull it up. It was, um, well, it's not in there. But it was basically along lines of, you know, talking about the world, world rally, what that's all about. What, what was your favorite moment from that versus that of Rallycross? I think uh, favorite favorite moment must have been, well, for sure, Rally GB uh, victory. Uh, but also, and I have another one when I crashed on the shakedown, destroyed the car, and the team looked at the car and they say this will be difficult to repair. So at the start line i you have to drive over uh, the start line on on the night before the rally starts mm -hmm. so i walked over the start line me and my co-driver <laughs> and the guys was working the whole night with the car of course and the car came out from painting 6 30 in the morning the rally started seven o'clock that and and the wheels was not even straight because they couldn't straighten all the four wheels because the chassis was bent. And I ended up winning the rally. I can't believe what is, it. No, how? what is the chances? Corsica was, rally. So that's what I was, so that was like, how does someone go from knowing those circumstances of what you're up against to winning? Like, what do you do in your mind? How do you mentally get there? Uh, I don't know. But, uh, for, the t uh, but uh, for the team spirit, and people to get together to get the motivation to repair the car and working flat out and get it ready. It's it's a moment that night that I will never forget. That is and I I have another one. So I don't know. Maybe you have seen when I had a big big accident in Germany rally in two thousand with, uh, with Subaru. Yeah, I rolled yeah. over the Hinkelstein. And um, and I mean, the car was really bad, yeah? I thought my co-driver died mm. because the car was smashed together. He had his head between his legs and the blood came out. I was, I don't know, I was ah, absolutely, well, I was so scared. Of course, you have that empathy yeah. then for, for your co-driver and, and the fear that is, comes with all of that. The car was finished, you know, completely. And I only bat my tongue. That was the only thing that happened to me. But one week after, we are going to Japan rally for the first time to Japan with the, fact <laughs> with the team. because uh, So it was a big, uh, big thing for Subaru for us to come over. So right. Huge deal, right. My, my car driver was in the hospital. And I came up to the hospital and I said, and I said so uh, Phil... Uh, which car driver should I choose for Japan? You know now, since you are, you know, you are very bad. Ah, forget it. I will be ready. It was full of morphine. You know, it was blue, yellow, and everything. Yeah. But the thing is, came to Japan. Every driver said Peter is finished now after a big accident, so he will he will not have a chance. And with the president of Subaru and Future Heavy Industries coming, first stage, I beat the Sebastian Loeb with 13 seconds. I won the rally. What? Yeah. And the second rally, I won after that. And the third rally. So I won three <laughs> rallies in a row after that. So That's if I'm insane. stupid or whatever, I don't know. But you see that everything is possible. And, yeah. But sometimes... That's 110% right That there. is 110%. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is, 110%. Yeah. That's insane. But yeah. Yeah, so that, this that is the insane. moment that give you, you know, when you talk about memories... Mm -hmm. This is maybe more important memories than maybe, you know, winning the world championship, who is obviously huge. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I, it's it's fantastic. Uh, when you yeah. when you think back, when you think back to those moments, like, and you can understand really what they're all about now that you're kind of removed from them. 
how did how does that impact you into your team now and, and really all of us too like how do you how do you interpret what that is for today uh for, first of all i think that everything is possible and the second thing you need to have a lot of respect for the people around you and also for all of us point of view you need to to respect the people whatever who it is and and i think that whatever situation you come in you need to reset you need to analyze you have to think you have to do a strategy and some it will be tough it will shit will happen and yes, it does. It does. <laughs> yeah it you, does. you know this this sounds strange but before a season we will sit down and talk about uh because what it doesn't matter how much you prepare mm -hmm. a season yeah things will happen yeah. you know that's motorsport too yeah it 100% but it's, it's life but it's life. and and if you are so good and the team is obviously clear uh, clear uh, clarified about this you will the the only thing that you have to be very good at for everybody is to be having solution every time very quickly yeah, yeah. i yeah. almost used the word problem you know but i i turned it around. you had to rethink that we're not using that word no exactly <laughs> not one of them yeah. what was what was what would you say in this process someone just asked what was the most difficult season and i know you know whether that be uh, coming back and bouncing back whether it was retirement whether it was a health scare you know, those, those are those lows that really make those highs, whether it be with you, your family, or with Oliver and your team, worth it. Uh, I think maybe the toughest time must have been when Subaru pulled out. And mm -hmm. in three weeks, I, I built up the team, got all the people, got all the trucks, got all the cars. And, yeah. and because it was no other solution, to do that time so the only yes, thing you can do yeah because you can't wait for something to happen you know you have to just do it fix it deal with it right. and it's so many drivers when you have lost a contract or a factory contract or whatever oh shit that's that's yeah. it you know what do i do now then right they have nothing else to stand on at that point correct put your gloves on again start yeah. to think how you did when you started when you were 18 work on sponsors do presentations say that you're gonna win be the best and uh and uh, if you, it, but if you believe in yourself, and you still think you are good, yeah, you should never be afraid of that, you know. Yeah, but it's but a lot you, of work. How you, but how does that define differently than overconfident? Like one of the things that people have said below is the fact that you're so humble. So how do you translate that confidence into a, a humble confidence and not not one that is, you know, look at me, I'm a superstar. How do you how do you print, how do you keep the difference between the two? The thing the thing is you just have to be very happy and and very lucky about the situation that you are in. Yeah. And the only thing Great. I want oh, to do sure. the only fun, uh, thing I love is to have a lot of fans and a lot of people around be a part of the 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 adventure you are on in your life, you know. Yeah. And yeah. of course I'm from a farm, you know, uh, <laughs> and uh, and Fair. the chance and and chance of coming from small Norway and have a chance to get into this big sport, you know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's incredible. Yeah. So keep on going and, and, uh, well, I'm in the workshop and building cars and, you know, I love it. And yeah, it's a passion. I love people's comments. You're like from Argentina to Italy, Germany to Europe, people have been commenting, but the idea that these people are so respectful of you, you're their idol, you're who they look up to, you're the reason that they're, you know, they went rally racing. I mean, when you kind of take a step back and think about that, how do you, do you, do you recognize that that's real life, but yet you stay with such a good head on your shoulders? You're one of my favorite humans that I've interacted with at the racetrack. <laughs> the thing, the you're a good time. The thing, the thing is, you know, it. I think it's fantastic, you know, that uh, that you know, I had a lot of uh, people I looked up to also early days, you know. Who who were who were some of those? Well, for sure, in in small Norway, it was Martin Skunk in Rallycross that time when that sure. was huge. Yep. And then after that, we uh, we uh, okay, it was Colin McRae and Tommy McKin. Yeah. And I ended up in being a teammate and best friend with Colin McRae. 
And yeah. then I ended up teammate with Tommy Mekin and was world champion <laughs> together with me. So, you know, you have to remember I was in Swedish rally, freezing my ass off, you yeah. know, in 30, minus 30, <laughs> sleeping in the motorhome. No, it's no, those no. little things, it's those little things that make the big things that much better. <laughs> <laughs> and then a few years later, you were there, you know? Yeah. And uh, Can you, I actually forgot you? your question. I forgot your question. What was the question? Well, actually? I was asking about the legends, but how do you stay so grounded knowing these people? You're, you're, you, are, you are a legend to so many. You're an idol to so many. How do you I stay so I dreaming every day for new challenges and new, new thing. You know, what you have done is fantastic, but I still dream about... Uh, since Oliver is on the good road now as himself, <laughs> after driving uh, a lot, I want to run a factory team in in uh, in rallying. Yeah, I've been. Do you think working it'll happen? It will happen. Okay, okay, I'm gonna be a little bit cocky now. Okay, I can be a little bit cocky one time. Yeah. <laughs> one time I will be cocky. So everything I started in my life, and we talk about eight, uh, say, eighty-seven. When I was Norwegian champion in rally, uh, in radio control, and also I was, I think it was '87. I was a dancing champion when I was 14, but I won everything I started in my whole career, in every single thing. So that's, that's not, a small cocky. That's not that, cocky, by the way. That's just facts. <laughs> <laughs> it is. A, it is a fact. So I know that by dreaming a lot. And uh, wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say that you are the best to yourself and and uh, and having a good coffee to really fire off. I think everything is possible. Right. And I want to. Uh, I run my team now with uh, in rallycross with six world championships. You know, in the Citroen and the and the and the Polo. Yeah. So so obviously. It's yeah, it's fantastic. It's going to happen. So, 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 so to answer the question, yes, it's going to happen somehow. It's going it, to, it, uh, <laughs> running I'm working. the team is going to happen. <laughs> I'm confident. working on two manufacturers and I've been working a long time on them. And, um, and um, now we just have to see it's for, for sure this situation we are happening uh, coming in now. It's delayed quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but I have no stress. If it's happening in two years or three years, it doesn't matter, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's not necessarily about that point in destination. It's about the progress to get there. It's that is happening, and it's quality, and you want the manufacturers with you that wants to win as much as I, I do. This is the... This is... Oh, I'm jealous now. Are you, are, is who's fighting for him? What's happening over here? He's driving the, also with... Gloves. The thing is, I've been driving the simulator myself now for 14 days. He haven't even been in it, you know. Uh, yeah, four hours. And now... Uh, <laughs> it, what, what are some of the truest takeaways that you're learning from, that you or, or Oliver are learning that can take to the track from it? I mean, are you, is it learning the tracks? Is it the difficult. Um, is it car control? Is it learning the tracks? What do you see some of the value in? I think a lot of the things is about having keeping focus for a long time, okay. doing not do, not doing mistakes. Yeah, and uh, you know we have this sober World Cup that goes all around the world now. We have fourteen thousand members in it. Yeah, and Oliver is Oliver is nine or tenth, I think, in the eight eight in the championship, and. It's all about the end of the day to not do mistakes. And yeah. I think you can learn from it. Uh, yeah. But now he's driving circuit uh, with a with a Porsche. <laughs> so it's <laughs> yeah. what's what, what's your favorite thing to run on there? I mean, you have 14 days in a row of sim. You got to you got to have a favorite at this point, a favorite car, favorite track. Well, the car we use in our factory is a little bit different. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a Brabham. We use a uh, McLaren uh, first. Uh, mm -hmm. Difficult to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. Um, but I like the dirt, the, the rally game. And yeah. I think it was the number one game last year also from all game uh, games. And um, I think it's great fun. Yeah. You see my eyes is going over. I, I know, I know. You're such a, 
you're such a driver. <laughs> it's so funny. You're such a racer. I'm like, I, I, what we used to say with, with Tanner and I used to talk about it is be like, look at the fridge, look at the fridge, because that was the only way that I think we could get, refocus the attention was to look at the refrigerator <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Okay, yeah. so talk to me how you guys are so creative, um, creating Team Solberg and what that the series is all about and and why you guys really thought that that would be a good foundation to moving forward. Well, it's for sure, it was Oliver. You know, he's doing most of the things himself with uh, mm -hmm. uh, with sponsors and gaming and planning and social media. And, and um, the thing is, if there's no other things to do. Yeah. Oh, look at my dog. Oh, ho, puppy. Whoa, that's a pretty dog. Those are some curly ears you got. Yeah, <laughs> Chief Joseph, his name is. <laughs> uh, I'm really glad you named it a dog, a, a human name instead of a dog's name. I respect that. <laughs> uh, it, it was his born name before we got what? it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So not too much credit then. Never mind. <laughs> um, Team Solberg, though. No, I think this gaming, we have uh, the, the film that goes in Norway and Sweden, eight series, uh, yeah. that I actually said no to. Uh, Did you? Yeah, because it takes too much time. I see. But then, uh, then I was thinking, you know, it would be fantastic to do it when you are, uh, when you are uh, stopping your career to get it on, on film. Right. That's so this... This TV company, and uh, then Oliver did his first race, so the TV company um, said yes to that. Uh, so we, um, it's eight series, and uh, I think the fourth one was out yesterday. Yep. Hey, it things are happening, it's just, and they have followed to America all the races Oliver did in America with uh, with Subaru, um, yep. and all the things I did, good with Festival of Speed, Jim Carter Grid. So good, it's so much good stuff. So yeah, it's a lot of traveling. And then uh, this gaming thing we have, is it's very good for all the kids that, that yeah. compete, can compete with you. Um, and also good for the sponsors again. You know, we need activation and make people happy. You know, yeah. it's in this difficult so situation. Different. It's so different than back in the 80s and the 90s when you were running. Now with the social media and the development of what that is, the branding and what that looks like. And, you know, trying to competition level and a team owner standpoint like what a different world right? things are changing you know uh, i remember <laughs> i have to talk. i remember when i was doing safari rally 99 you know i was sending fax faxes back home you know and uh <laughs> yeah to my parents and and then uh, i was uh i bore the team said oh you can borrow the gps phone for three minutes every day yeah so you know minutes, so don't go over <laughs> and now you can't live without the phone, whatever you do. But <laughs> but now at least to keep in connections, you know, like with you and many people <laughs> all around the world to be, to share stories. And I think everybody will be more. It's more positive to have a chance to mm -hmm. to do it actually now. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, and, and and tie in from not only connectivity between us from other people in the community, but your sponsors and, and the branding exercises that go along with that, trying to still figure out how you how you can clear your head and get clarity away from it at times. I, I'm a believer in like dropping the phone when like I don't need to be on the phone because <laughs> like clear my head. But I know that like there's other people who, yeah, you can't live without it, it's amazing. It's a well, different world for sure. Um, okay, wait, but I have a question. Out of all the places that you've ever been, which you've been to, all the places um what has been either your favorite location or what was your favorite meal what's your favorite type of food oh you know i love food yeah i, I know <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> i can't make food i'm not very good at it but I'm, i know what is good food uh but best place i must say i loved australia really? uh, that is not what i thought you were gonna say not seriously one. What's about the food there? I don't Where? remember that. Uh, you know, I was after the, I was, I was after the sunshine. <laughs> uh, sunshine, the so I, that, that beautiful, yeah. I love New Zealand. And I love uh, Argentina, you know. Oh, Argentina, yeah. so good. 
So I love. I think it's many places. Everything with a different culture and learning, and and uh, and you you get many friends in every country. You know, uh, and the food, uh, Japanese food. You know, really? I, it's is for me is absolutely the best. The Kobe beef, vegetables, yeah. teppanyaki. Oh, so tekkadon, ah, oh, so good. Uh, what did you say? Tekkadon, like the the rice with the tuna on top, and I don't know, it's just wonderful. Sushi, oh, so good. I love it. Oh, I love it. I'm just curious, Andrew Andrew Coley had posted on the on the photo of us um, from Argentina. He and I had a tama share a tomahawk steak, or like somebody was in the table. It it is one of, if not, I might have to post that photo after this. It was one of my favorite meals. I have <laughs> that photo from 2015 to more people across the board than any other photo. That uh, the food in Argentina was amazing. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I've done the rally there so many times, and uh, the passion they have there, also the people for uh, for motorsport, totally. it's it's uh, it's huge, you know. So, yeah. um, no, it's been uh, it's been good. And also, yeah. I also loved really much to be in, in the American Rally Championship also last year, you know, on really? all the different places all around. Uh, it's very different, uh, very different, but... Uh, it's, nice, it's cool in that way, which all of those locations, I don't know if you knew this, but I covered when it was Rally America back in 2015. I, we tried to make a TV show on NBCSN with it. And yeah. uh, it's just such, it's such a dynamic sport, Rally. Uh, it's just so difficult to cover from a TV perspective, you know? Mm. And um, I, I, when I saw you over there, and I know, like, Tiffany Stone's a, a you know, girlfriend of mine in the industry, and I was, I felt so much FOMO that I wasn't a part of it. I was so badly <laughs> to be back with all of you guys. Um, but, yeah, stateside, I wish that there was more love and TLC to support it, because it's such a cool sport. It really is. Yeah, but, you know, I love every sport. You know, I follow every sport uh, in general, but, and... Um... After we have also done the the race of champions with the Bush brothers and stuff, also yeah. you know, we uh, we following NASCAR quite a lot, you know. Yeah. So I, and the, and the timing is very different. So me and Oliver is uh, is staying in the same bed watching uh, NASCAR. <laughs> watching NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. So it, you know, it's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, but when you're building up this all these relationships uh, with the with all the different type of sports, you know, you get some connection and and then uh, you get. Uh, dragged into it and you like you to follow and see how it. to do mm. you get sucked into it and that's that's something that's been really cool from uh, my angle i've hopped out of motorsport two or three or four times now and every single time you mentioned argentina argentina and the fans and the, the community there are so passion uh, driven and i think that's a motorsport all law i mean that's what drives us right no yeah. pun intended but like the idea that that's a passion and the the loyalty that motorsport is is just something indescribable to so many people who are not involved in motorsport. Absolutely true. I so agree with you, and it's hard to get rid of, huh? <laughs> I literally, I've tried to get rid of it, like multiple times. <laughs> impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Um, well, Instagram is going to kick us off, but before we go, I, I want to say um, first and foremost, thank you. I'm so glad we got the time zones figured out. That won't happen again. <laughs> Um, but number two, as, um, as kind of working, we're staying at home, we're, we're able to other people are not, we're out trying to fight, you know, this pandemic that's going on a big, I'm grateful for those people. Do you have anything to say to those who are out on the front lines? I didn't get anything what you said there. Cool. All right. So <laughs> what, I, <laughs> what I said is that <laughs> before, before we go, I just want to say a big thanks to everybody who's out fighting the COVID and uh, the coronavirus. And Definitely. You and I are in our homes and very comfortable in our homes. Uh, and there's a lot of people that are not. Uh, so before Instagram kicks us off, uh, which it will here momentarily, do you have anything to say to them? Well, take care, respect each other, and give each other a lot of love over the phone, you know, like we do here on the Instagram. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, give everybody, everybody stories and, and look at the future and keep on dreaming. Everything is possible. And, Everything uh, is possible. 110% keep on dreaming. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. That's going to forever live between uh, the it's, it's, it's really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Well, mm. thank you for, for sharing the time today. Tell Oliver, Penelope, we all said hi. And um, maybe we'll get that part two when you're back at the workshop. We'll do this again. I will show you all my cars one day. So thank you to everybody and talk soon. Thank you. Bye, Peter. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.